Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of why no one plays for Genshin. It took a while to figure out what to do for the next video because my first thought was to go over all the popular characters no one plays, like uh, Lisa, Xinyan, Aloy, Chichi, maybe Yanfei. But I mulled it over for a bit and realized no one plays the Traveler. Well, I mean, there are probably a few people out there who use them, but for a main character, they're usually swapped out almost immediately. So for today, how about we talk about the most popular character in the game that seldom anyone actually uses, Aether and Lumine, collectively referred to as Traveler. Once again, I'd like to make a quick disclaimer that this video is not a personal attack, nor is it meant to be a Traveler hate video. For those of you who play any variant of the MC, Animo, Geo, or Electro, I have nothing against you and I'm not trying to trash your main. The goal of why no one plays is to discuss characters who are used or sought after, analyzing what makes them unpopular, and perhaps trying to figure out ways we can theoretically make them more usable beyond just increasing numbers. More than any other character in the game, Aether and Lumine are hard to get a read on. Within the world of Tevat, the only people who can use elemental power are those who carry visions, trinkets that serve as a conduit for channeling energy into whatever element they're imbued with. Yet somehow, Traveler is able to do this not just for one element, but for all. As far as origins go, we have yet to find out where they come from, who they are, and what they're trying to do. This entails a great deal of conjecture. We don't know what to expect going forward as the game progresses and they unlock more elements, but what we do know for certain is that they're weak. Like, really weak. Currently, we have access to only three forms, Animo, Geo, and Electro, each with their own set of elemental skills, burst, and talents. Those elements correspond with the nations the Traveler has explored so far. Mondstadt, Liyue, and Inazuma. Sumeru, Fontaine, Natlan, and Snezhnaya will give us the remaining four, Dendro, Hydro, Pyro, and Cryo. It's almost like Mihoyo knew Pyro and Cryo are broken, so they're giving them to us last. Anyways, despite their ostensible versatility and supposed 5-star label, the Traveler is far from a good unit, getting beaten out by the vast majority of even 4-star characters. A little incongruous considering they're the main character. You'd think these all-powerful god-smiting twins would be at the very least contending against some of the 5-stars, but nope. So what happened then? I suppose you can say it has more to do with aspects that aren't tied to gameplay than you might think. The almost non-existent usage of Aether and Lumine really boils down to the fact that they're a free character, which in gacha games is seen as low value compared to those you pull. Whether they're actually good or bad in practice is largely irrelevant because everyone has the Traveler, and therefore, they place greater importance on other characters that you obtain. A lot of video games, especially JRPGs, like to make their main characters very strong due to their significance in the story, or to give a greater sense of reward for investing in the character. After all, they were your first one, right? In Pokemon games, virtually everyone incorporates their starter Pokemon into their team because they have naturally high base stats. Of course, there are stronger Pokemon out there, but they require far more investment and you don't have the benefit of having them at the beginning to work on right away. Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy replicate this construct by making their protagonists one of the best units to have on your team, if not the best. Not saying that's always the case, you have a few dead ones here and there, but as the titular protagonist of their respective games, it would be far from a good design choice to not make them a prominent character in gameplay. Gacha games are the only genre I can think of where the main characters are almost unanimously bad, in air quotes. From a business standpoint, it makes total sense. They wouldn't want the free units to be too strong because that nullifies a large incentive to spend money on the game and get the new units. But from a gameplay standpoint, a core experience to those types of games is to utilize as many of the different units available as possible. The very reason behind the genre's name, Gacha, a capsule machine designed to give you random things with the goal of collecting every unique one. So how does this pertain to the Traveler? They, and by extension the rest of the free units, exist only to be good enough to at least make the game playable, to complete all the content there is to offer. To make them exceptional would be defeating the purpose of making other units, as no matter how casually someone plays the game, there's a natural desire for gamers to veer towards the more powerful ones. While Genshin is the first taste of the gacha landscape for a lot of people, prevailing wisdom easily deduces that Aether and Lumine aren't meant to be all that great. What kinda bothers me though is that the Traveler themselves are involved in every point of progression in the main story, and it's repeatedly, emphatically stated that they're extremely powerful. Even in the fight against Child in the Golden House, we see cutscenes of them using both Animo and Geo simultaneously, and yet we can utilize only one at a time in the actual game. With the universe constructed around visions granting each character only one element, narratively speaking, it would have been an amazing premise for the main character to be able to command multiple elements at once. Of course, they still have yet to unlock Hydro, Dendro, Cryo, and Pyro, so there might potentially be an Awakened Traveler or something once you get all seven at the end. But in the present moment, their lore does not reflect their performance, adding further disillusionment towards the main character. In other words, it's about mentality. Very few players are aware of the actual power level of the Traveler because very few people care. 
It also ties into the whole silent protagonist trope, being the MC and therefore a self-insert. It wouldn't be wise for them to have too much of a personality outside of what is obligatory for them in this story, so as not to conflict with the personality of whoever is playing them. I mean, there has been a lot of discussion about the rather crude and almost egotistical attitude they and Paimon have adopted since Inazuma, but when compared to the colorful cast that is everybody else, they're pretty bland. It sounds silly, but there's a significant correlation between a character's theme, appearance, and a player's willingness to want to use them. Why are Yasuo and Yona two of the most popular champions in League of Legends? Well, they're the archetypal edgy anime swordsmen with a lone wolf attitude. It doesn't matter if they're good or bad, people are loyal to the champions because they're cool and fun. In video games, units have to either be strong or likable in both personality and gameplay. Personality-wise, they're neither a strong character nor very likable, and they also fail in the gameplay department too. Let me explain. Regardless of element, Aether and Lumine are essentially downgraded versions of each region's respective Archons. Palm Vortex and Gust Surge give you a glimpse of Animo's crowd control capabilities, which you see in full force displayed by Venti's Greatest Skyward Sonnet and Wind's Grand Ode. Starfell's Sword creates a geoconstruct that does damage and can be interacted with like terrain, while Wake of Earth creates a shockwave of geo damage in a large area, also designed to show you the various interactions within the geo element. Zhongli's abilities showcase it to its maximum potential. Dominus Lapidus summons terrain as well, but it's supplemented by a shield. Planet Befall is also geo damage in a massive area, but it additionally petrifies. Being the element of energy, Electro is designed to introduce you to energy based mechanics. Lightning Blade and Bellowing Thunder both grant energy charge, which fittingly makes Electro Traveler a battery. Shogun demonstrates the offensive properties of energy by having her attacks coordinate with and strengthened by the usage of elemental skills and bursts. Given that this occurred thrice now, we can assume all future elemental variants of the Traveler will be elementary forms of the element's overarching theme. For example, Pyro MC will likely have a great focus on power, while Hydro MC might have elements of healing in their kit. Correspondingly, the Archons will represent the quintessential theme of their element. What this means is that the Traveler cannot ever be strong in Genshin Impact due to how they were designed from the start. Not saying they're bad, but they'll never be great. If you have the wherewithal to do so, Venti, Zhongli, and Shogun are effectively Animo, Geo, and Electro Traveler, but infinitely better. This was such a missed opportunity in my opinion. If you think about it, as you travel to new lands, you start off as a novice with that element, but as you progress through each regional Archon story, your character becomes more and more proficient. For instance, the Inazuma storyline is the first time in Genshin where the Archon is an actual antagonist rather than an ally like Venti or a third party observer like Zhongli. The first time you go up against Shogun, she doesn't just beat you, she destroys you. But then you go through your little anime training arc with Yaimiko and then face her again, this time putting up more of a fight. I know there's a whole lot of plot contrivance with the rematch, what with the whole power of friendship thing happening, but you get the idea. The Traveler gets stronger as time goes on, reflected by the constellations that you unlock as you progress. With that in mind, it would have been an awesome design feature for their elemental skills and bursts to evolve as time goes on. They could have gained new properties like Geo Traveler having a short lasting stun on their ultimate, or Electro Traveler's Lightning Blade acting like Pyra's Blazing End in Smash Bros where they stay on the field and repeatedly damage enemies for a few seconds rather than disappearing right away. Things like that. Constellations as a system should serve to enhance a character's power, not make up for what is missing. The few things they can excel at are diluted in usefulness by terrible usability and quality of life. And when I say quality of life, I mean a complete absence of it. Perfecting a character takes a lot of investment. You have to get them a nice weapon, pray to RNGs as you get a decent artifact set in less than a thousand resin, and spend so much more on talents that you become just as broke as Zhongli, if not worse. Well guess what? For Traveler, you have to do this for every single element. Weapon, you can probably get away with the same one regardless of element. I think most people just use Skyward Blade or Sacrificial Sword, but you have to get a new artifact set for each version, and you have to level up talents. Yes, you have to level up talents all over again. Getting triple level 10 on Animo Traveler does not transfer over to Geo or Electro, and I have no idea why. As I explained earlier in the video, it's pretty common for the free characters to not be very good in order to incentivize players to pull gacha. But for a game that's so limited in resources, there is zero reason you should force players to redo talents on a character that will only ever be mediocre at best, especially since getting level 10 requires a crown of insight, an item that you only get one of every month at most. It would be understandable if their talent costs were cheaper, but they're just as expensive as everyone else's, multiplied by up to 7 once every region is unlocked. You also don't have on-demand access to each element at once. In order to switch from Electro to Geo, you have to teleport to a statue in Liyue to switch elements. Additionally, while you get free constellations on them, they all suck. Let's look at Animal Traveler's constellations. C2 gives you 16% energy recharge. You can get that on an artifact substat with just two upgrades. 
C4 makes you take 10% less damage on Palm Vortex, an ability that's already very clunky and annoying to use because you have to charge it for maximum effect. C6 does have a decent elemental shred, but you get 20% less resistance from so many other units, heck, even from an artifact set. Now, contrary to popular belief, just because they're replaceable doesn't mean they're unusable. We've already seen in Kokomi's episode that she's not a bad unit in a vacuum. Her insane healing makes your team nearly invincible, and she can do a decent amount of damage as a hydro reactor. But given that she's a 5-star unit and the demand for healing is not very high right now, it's not worth going for her because there are cheaper, more all-purpose options. Those who have her though do use her quite liberally. On the other hand, the Traveler is widely accessible since everyone has them, and since they're supposed to be the generalist of their element, you can make do with them for at the very least elemental resonance. For example, a lot of people have theorized that Geo Traveler is good when paired up with Ito who should be out by the time I release this video. Electro MC has found a comfortable spot as an energy battery thanks to the amulets dropped by Lightning Blade, and Bellowing Thunder can serve as supplemental electro damage, kind of like Xingqiu's Rain Cutter, while supplying even more energy charge. At the very least, there are use cases for Traveler, but not many. And so you end up with a character who is supposedly meant to be the Swiss army knife of each element, but it's just so mediocre in all of them because they don't do very much. Ultimately, the Traveler is just average. There's a part of me that agrees with the notion that free units should only be good enough to be usable, and they are. But the other part of me wonders, why did they have to restrict them so much? Farming new artifacts and talents with each element on top of the weak base stats, on top of not having simultaneous access to each element, on top of bad constellations, on top of underwhelming abilities. Generally, the starting characters are mid-tier. Not the best unit, but they're certainly not the worst. Even among gacha games, Genshin Impact is probably the only one I've played where all starters are terrible. Traveler, Lisa, Amber, and Kaya. Well, Kaya is usable, but there are so many better cryo units out there. That said, there's still the possibility that Dendro, Hydro, Cryo, or Pyro Traveler will be better, so we'll have to see. Even though it's completely unreasonable to make the player refarm talents for each element, it at least implies that each variant is mutually exclusive from each other and aren't beholden to the same power budget, so there's the possibility that future elements of Traveler might be S tier. Who knows? That about covers everything I have to say about Aether and Lumine. I hope it was insightful to those who needed it and entertaining to those who wanted it. If you could think of a way to improve the current Animo, Geo, and Electro Travelers, what would they be? I know Geo Traveler is supposedly the best one of the three, but even then, that's super niche, and there's also no good Geo units in the game right now except Zhongli and Albedo. For the time being, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate if you gave it a like, really helps out the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Check out my main channel, Vars, if you want to see discussion content on League of Legends. Aside from that, feel free to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and lastly check out my previous Why No One Plays episodes on Genshin if you haven't yet. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.